Hello, teacher Svetlana is here and today at our school of SFB we are sculpting a character. In game industry and animation many people uh, usually work on the same character down the pipeline. So a maquette of the character or a sculpture of a character is created for everyone to have a very good reference of the character. Last week you designed a character so today you can uh, create a sculpture of it. Here's the design from last video that teacher Ali kindly allowed me to use for this class. You want to have a drawing in the size of the sculpture you're going to make because that will help you to make the skeleton or wire skeleton for the sculpture. Uh, use aluminum wire because um, it bends much better than the wire made of steel. I usually make a loop for the head and then twist the wire where the body is and leave the extra wire for the legs. Um, I do the loop in the end of the legs to have this um, wire skeleton standing. Then I added some arms, uh, twist it around the body and uh, then I added a thinner wire. That will make the clay in thin areas to um, stick to the wire better than just to the um, thick wire. You probably noticed me going back and forth to the um, to measure um, against the printout of the character. Uh, that way I will make sure that my character is the same size and proportions that I want it to be. After the wire is done, I'm adding uh, aluminum foil to build up a little bit of the body before I apply clay. This is a polymer clay I'm going to be using. It's called Sculpey and you will need to bake the sculpture after it's done. Uh, 275 Fahrenheit and 15 minutes for every quarter of inch of thickness. Apply the clay piece by piece. Don't work with the big piece of clay at the same time. Just um, add some pieces and uh, put them together, uh, smudge them and um, form the body parts. When you're building up the sculpture, uh, please make sure that it's not flat. So if the character looks like a human or an animal, um, all the body parts uh, have volume, so don't make it a uh, thin, flat uh, body shape. After building the majority of the body, I started adding clay for the clothes. Um, because it has some folds, I will need extra uh, clay to be able to um, make those folds. Also, I added some you know, color, some um, details on the face, uh, additional clay for the hair and so on. I decided to show you a little bit more details how to sculpt the face. So this is the shape of the head and the eyes are in the middle. So I'm indenting in the areas where the eye sockets are. And then I flatten down for the cheeks, um, indicate where the tip of the nose is and even adding some clay for the, uh, for the nose if I want to have the actual nose for the character. Um, the mouth between the tip of the nose and the chin and I'm making um, a raised area there. The additional clay will help me to sculpt out the lips uh, because lips are not flat on the face. They're actually on the um, cylinder shape there. And what I do, I cut the line between the lips and kind of roll out, roll um, up for the upper lip and down for the uh, lower lip um, and sculpt them so they do not stick out too much. There are two ways to do the eyes. First way is to um, deepen the area to have an actual eye socket and put an eyeball in there and then um, make um, a little kind of sausage shape for the um, 
eyelids, the top one and the bottom one, and sculpt around so it, they look like the eyelids for the eye. Uh, make sure that down the uh, lower um, eyelid is a little bit you know, less sticking out than the top one. The other way is just to draw the eye with some sharp uh, tool. I do not like this method because it makes the um, eye still look flat and um, but it look it works pretty well for the characters that um, are cartoony looking and also if the height is pretty small so there's um, very hard to sculpt the actual eye. Um, then as you can see I am um, taking out some clay from the eyeballs. Um, I'm making a little hole there for the eyes um, because the indent will look darker than the other area it will um, actually look like the iris. Um, this um, method was used for the sculptures since Greeks, um, ancient Greece so um, I'm kind of using this cheat. You don't have to do that you can color um, the uh, eyes after it's baked uh, if you're going to be coloring the sculpture, but um, I decided to to do it this way here. I remember that the hair is additional volume, so you want uh, you want to add more clay on top of the head to um, make those um, that hairstyle that you want for the sculpture. So um, this is the character so far. I added some folds, I added some legs, um, uh, hands, um, drew some face. Um, what I want to show you is also how to create textures. Uh, as you can see here, we have the very um, fuzzy texture on her color. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to create in this character, uh, this texture in there. So what I do, I basically poke the surface with the needle or you can use um, tip of your sharpened pencil and that will create kind of fuzzy texture to look like it's a collar made out of fur. This is my sculpture so far. I also sculpt the pug. They are standing on the temporary base. Uh, I will make a flat one after I bake those uh, figures. Um, I will also paint them after they are baked. That's it. Let's look at the creations of our students and then it's going to be your turn. Thank you. Good luck.